Hello. Uh, in this session, we will see some uh, problems uh, illustrating whatever we have seen. And uh, let's see how well you have understood the concepts that I have presented. So this is Professor Uma Rao bringing you the lectures under the e Sikshana program of VTU. I'm a professor at RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru. So we will look at some problems with uh, transmission and uh, distribution under module three. So the first problem is a transmission line has A equal to D equal to point H, B is equal to 200 at an angle of 90 degrees, and C is equal to 0.5 into 10 to the power of minus six. So what is the unit of C? The unit of C is, right, moles. And the unit of B is ohms. So on no load, the sending end voltage is 400 kV. What is the sending end current? Right? So what is the sending end current? So what do you have to, what is the catch phrase here, it is no load. Or no load. Here. So what characterizes no load? No load means IR, the receiving end current will be zero. Right? The receiving end current will be zero. So therefore, you have the equation Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR. IR is zero, from which we get Vs is equal to AVR, or we can write the receiving end voltage is equal to Vs by A. Right? So Vs is 400 kV. Now, all these we solve on upper face basis. So, divided by root 3, divided by root 3. And that is the line to neutral voltage of sending end divided by A. Magnitude of A is 0.8. So, I get 288.675 kV. Okay. So, this is the receiving end voltage on no load. Next, what do I have to find? Simple. Is is equal to CVR plus BIR. IR is zero. So I just substitute. Is is equal to CVR. So I get the sending end current is 0 0.144 amperes. So you see, even though the system is on no load, receiving end current is zero. There is still a sending end current. Why? Why is there a current here when there is no load? The reason is this current is due to the charging capacitors. Due to the charging capacitors. Clear? Now, if you look at the ABCD constants, you should know whether the capacitance has been considered or not. How will you know that? I have given a value for C. Right? So if the capacitance is not considered, like in the short line model, C would be zero. Right? If you recollect your short line model, A, B, C, D, A, D are one, C is zero, and B is Z. So a value of C, a non-zero value of C implies that in the model under consideration, the capacitance of the line has been considered. The capacitance of the line has been considered. Clear. Yeah. 
Next, the power transfer capability of a line is 11 kV. At 11 kV, it is 10 megawatts. What is the capability if the voltage is raised to 33 kV? No other detail is given. So how will you find out? Yes. So you know that the power transferred the, in the first unit you have seen, the power is proportional to V square. Right? The, prop, the power is proportional to V square. Therefore, therefore, what has happened to V? V has been increased by three times. V has increased by three times. So V squared is nine. Therefore, the power will increase. So it is 10 megawatts into three square. Right? It becomes 90 megawatts. So the power is 90 megawatts. Clear? Next. Supposing I told you we have models, the short line model, the medium T and pi models and the long line model. So do I just choose a model based on the line length? Now, you know, we have lines also for communication. And you know, the frequency in the communication lines is pretty high. High frequency we will be using. Yes. And now when I discussed the long line model, what does the model account for, which is not there in the short line and medium line models? So the long line model basically accounts for the wave nature of the signal. So I told you in the long line model, you will treat the current and voltage as electromagnetic signals propagating through the medium, which is the conductor. So your la transmission line acts like a wave guide. In field theory, you would have studied in electromagnetics, wave guides. So it guides the wave, the 50 hertz or 60 hertz power signal, voltage and current signal, it guides it. And while the signal travels through the medium, it gets attenuated and there is a phase shift. And there is a phase shift. Clear? So therefore, I choose the line model, not only based on the length, but also on the frequency. So, you know, long line model, the computation is rigorous. In fact, it's called as the model is called as the rigorous model, right? So, as a thumb rule, as a thumb rule, you check for the product of the line length and frequency. If this is greater than 10,000, then you can use the long, long line model. If you use the short line models, etc., your answers will be inaccurate. Let us consider an example. Say I consider 50 hertz over 50 kilometers. Right, 50 hertz over 50 kilometers. So I have 500 into 50, that is 25,000. So yes, I go for the long line model, even though it is just 50 kilometers and qualifies to be called as a short line. Clear? So this long line, short line, when we went about the line length, see if I use 50 hertz, 50 kilometers, 50 into 50 would be 2,500. I can use the short line model. That's how, you know, we demarcated about, about 100 you use a uh, uh, medium line and about 200, you use long line. So you see if it is 200 kilometers at 50 Hertz, 200 into 50 would be 10,000. And that's why after 200 kilometers, we said you use the long line model. Yeah. So that's why you see when the frequency is high, the wave gets quickly attenuated. And that's why your communication signals, you need boosters periodic boosters to boost the signal strength because the signal undergoes an attenuation in the medium. Clear? So this is how you would 
uh, decide whether it is worthwhile to go in for a long line mountain. Now, let us take one more problem. The ABCD parameters, always whenever you are solving, you make sure to see whether it is three phase or single phase. Every time it is three phase, you have to solve the circuit on a line to neutral basis. So the ABCD parameters of a three phase line are given by A is equal to D is equal to 0.9 at an angle of zero degrees and B is 150 at an angle of 90 degrees at no load, okay, at no load, a reactor is connected at the receiving end. I'm underlying for you to know what are all important in the problem statement, such that the sending end and receiving end voltages are equal. So you are expected to find what is the value of the reactor, right? Now, just see here what I'm doing. Actually, I have, I have the receiving end. So this load is zero. There is no load, right? But I have a reactor. So this is zero, this current, but this reactor will take a current of IL. Let's call L for the reactor, L for the inductance, right? So the load current is zero. So the reactor takes a current. Keep that in mind when we use the equations. So what do I have? I have my standard equation. I have my standard equation. Vs is AVR plus BIR. IR is the receiving end current. Now at the receiving end, the load current is zero. However, I have the current drawn by the inductor, which I have denoted as IL. See, I'm using the same concepts you have studied, but slightly the problems are slightly different. So you have to think and answer. Now let me divide all this entire equation by IL. So I get here Vs by IL and AVR by IL and VIL by IL, right? And for my condition given, Vs is equal to VR. So I have to put the reactor so that the receiving end voltage is same as the sending end voltage. Otherwise, you know Ferranti effect. If I have capacitance, if I have capacitance, and if there is no receiving end load, then the receiving end voltage will be higher than the sending end. But now under no load, I want to keep it same as the sending end, right? So I substitute Vs is equal to Vr because both are equal. So this is the left-hand side and this is the right-hand side. Right. Now, what is VR by IL? VR by IL. Look at this here. So this voltage is VR. This voltage is VR. So VR by IL will be give me the reactance of this inductor, which I have connected, the reactor connected. So VR by IL is XL and AVR by IL is AXL. And B, IL and IL will get cancelled. So I am left with B. So from this, I get XL is equal to B by 1 minus A. So B is 150, A is 0.9. So, so this B is 150. And A is 0.9. So I get... 1500 ohms. This is equal to L omega. If it is 50 hertz, divide by 340, you'll get the value of the inductance. It's quite a big, large reactor. This is a standard formula. XL is equal to B by 1 minus A is the value of the reactor to be connected at the receiving end so that on no load, the receiving end voltage and the sending end voltage are Next, a 
single phase transmission line delivers 1.1 megawatts of power at 33 kV.8 PF. So this is the receiving end power. This is the receiving end power. And this is the receiving end voltage. Always remember when we say it delivers at 33 kV means that voltage is the receiving end voltage. The line resistance and reactance are 10 and 15 ohms respectively. So there is significant resistance. Normally X by R ratio will be high, right? That, uh, that means R will be less compared to X, but here R is significant anyway. So calculate the sending end voltage, current, power factor, and efficiency. We have done many problems uh, like this. As I told you, this session is only for a recap of how to solve different problems, how to solve different problems, right? So what is the first thing you need to uh, calculate? You are only given R and X. Nothing is mentioned of the capacitance, so you can assume it's a short line. Don't assume some arbit data and complicate your matters. So it just means that you need not consider the capacitance. So IR, IR is PR, PR is 1.1 megawatts. Be careful about this. It's 10 to the power of 6 because it's megawatts divided by it is single phase. I told you always pay attention whether it is single phase or three phase. So I take the directly the voltage. Otherwise, you have to divide by root three because you have to deal with line two neutral voltage. So 33 kV, 33 into 10 to the power of three by PF is 0.8. So I get 41.67 amperes. And what is this minus 36.86? The power factor is 0.8. So it is minus 36.86 degrees. Right? Next, I have to calculate Vs. What is Vs? How do, how do I uh, calculate Vs? Vs is equal to, so what is my uh, formula here? What, what is it that I use? Vs is equal to Vr plus I Z. I know VR, I take this as the reference, 33 kV. I know I, it is 41.67 at an angle of minus 36.86. I know Z, it is 10 plus J, 15 ohms. So using this, I calculate Vs and I get Vs is this. Vs is equal to 33708.3 plus J250, which works out to be 33709 at an angle of 0.42. So a very small displacement. So what is this angle 0.42? This angle 0.42 is the angle of Vs with respect to Vr. Vs with respect to Vr. Clear? So I have now the sending end voltage and I need the power factor. So sending end current would be the same as the receiving end current because it's a short line. Now the sending end power factor, this is the angle minus 36 and 0.42. So the current is at minus 36 and the voltage is at plus 0.42. So the total angle difference between the two is 37.29. So the sending end power factor is 0 0.7955. Yeah. Easy. Next, I need to find the efficiency. So I need to find the line losses. What is a line loss? It's single phase. So you have two conductors. I told you in single phase, you will have a forward conductor and a return conductor. So it is into two. Current is uh, 41, uh, sorry, 41.67 squared into R. That is 17.364 uh, kilowatts. See here, 
your R and X is specified, 10 and 15 ohms respectively. So normally when they specify R and X in the single phase in such a manner, right? They mean the loop resistance or the loop inductance. What is the loop resistance, loop inductance? The resistance and inductance of the entire loop. So it would include both the conductors, both the conductors, clear? However, however, if you are, if the data is given in a different manner, supposing the da data is given in the resistance is so many ohms per kilometer, the resistance and reactance is given in ohms per kilometer. And if the line length is 50 kilometers, then you have to multiply I squared R by two because the line resistance is per kilometer and you will have a return conductor, clear? But supposing the total R and X are given, then in single phase, normally that itself is the loop resistance and loop reactance, taking into consideration the fact that there are two conductors. So be careful how you do it, right? So this is the efficiency is the receiving end uh, power. This is in kilowatts. Output divided by output plus losses. So when you calculate, make sure your units are all uh, are proper. So I get this. 98.44%. Okay. Now there is another method by which you can solve this problem. Again, as I said, it's a recap. So from the phasor diagram, we have written this approximate equation for the sending and voltage. Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir, R cos phi R plus Ir x sin phi R. We have written this. Now we know all the parameters. So I can simply substitute. So I have Vr, then Ir, R cos phi R, is 0.8 and i r x sine phi r is 0.6 so i have bs is 33708.4 more or less what you got uh, by the other method then how do i find phi s so i have another equation vs is cos phi vs into cos phi s is equal to vr cos phi r plus i r into r so from this, I can write cos phi s is this, right? I have already found the magnitude using the approximate formula. Then I have Vr cos phi r plus Ir into r by Vs. So I get 0 0.795. So you can solve it by either of the two methods. But for other models, it's best to solve Vs and Is using ABCD constant. What is the maximum length of a single phase line having a copper uh, conductor of 0.775 centimeter square area of cross section and resistivity of 1.725 micro ohm centimeter? And it is delivering 200, kilo, 200 kilowatts at UPF with a voltage of 3.3 kV and your transmission efficiency is 90%. So what all data I know? The receiving end power is 200 kilowatts, okay? The sending end power would be 200 by what is the efficiency? 0.9. So this would give you 222.22 kilowatts, right? So directly from this, I can write losses is equal to 22.22 kilowatts. Right. And what is losses? Losses is equal to, see here, it's a single phase line. 
And now you see the data is not given in terms of R and X, but it's given in terms of the conductors, sides, etc. Okay, so we will see what what uh, uh, is to be done. So I need to calculate anyway the receiving end current. So it is single phase. It is receiving end power by receiving end voltage is three point three kV into power factor is unity. So I get this is equal to sixty point six amperes. Clear? Yeah. Next. So what is the loss? The loss is the loss is two I squared R. Now you see why I have taken two? Because two conductors. Two conductors. Right? So I squared R would be R would be the resistance for one line. So since it's single phase, two lines, two I squared R. So this will be equal to twenty two point two two kilowatts right twenty two point two two kilowatts so now this is equal to two into current is sixty point six squared into r so from this i get r is equal to three point zero two five ohms R is equal to 3.025 ohms. Here, what is R? R is the resistance of one line because I have multiplied by 2. If you don't multiply by 2, then R would be the resistance of the entire loop. It would be the loop resistance. Clear? Yes. So, don't have this confusion. Next, we know what is L. R is equal to, you know, R is equal to rho L by A. So L is equal to L is equal to R A by rho. So R is three point zero two five, and area of cross section is zero point seven seven five divided by rho is one point. 725 into 10 to the power of minus 6 ohms centimeter. So remember, all these are in this is in centimeters squared. So you would get the length in centimeters. So this is equal to 1.36 into 10 to the power of 6 centimeters or 13.5. Six kilometers, thirteen point six kilometers. Therefore, for these specifications, my line length cannot exceed thirteen point six kilometers. Yeah. Now, as I told you, if you don't take this two, if you don't take this two, you would get here R would be double. So length also would be double because that is the resistance of two lines. You have to divide by two. So be careful how you solve in case of single phase clear now let's take one more problem the a b c d constants of a 220 um, kv line three phase three phase It's 220 kV line. It is three phase. So these are the A, B, C, D. And since C is non-zero, you know that it's not a short line model. The load is 50 megawatts and 0.9 PF lag. What is the sending end voltage? And uh, what is the regulation? We'll just see this. How to do this in the same problem. Now, 
what is the data given to me just see here the power is 50 megawatts at 0.9 pf and the receiving end voltage is 220 k therefore i calculate i calculate ir ir is equal to it is 50 megawatts so 50 into 10 to the power of 6 by by root 3 VL, IL we will take. So 220 into 10 to the power of 3 into cos 5 is Zero point nine. So this is equal to one. Wait, wait. So IR is fifty into ten to the power of six by by root three into two twenty. into 0.9 so this is equal to 145 right 145.777 amperes 77 amperes okay now what so what is the angle of this the angle of this would be cos inverse of 0 0.9 and cos inverse of 0 0.9 is minus 25.8 degrees okay next so i know i r then simple i use v s is equal to a v r a v r plus b i r so substituting for a and b i get 133.136246 at an angle of 7.77 degrees now what is this voltage this is the line to neutral voltage line to neutral voltage so i have to multiply it by root 3 to get the line to line voltage which works out to be 230.78 angle would be the same here so i have the sending end voltage now the next question is what is the regulation in the above problem. So what will you do? Just see here, one is directly you can do Vs minus Vr by Vr into 100. Otherwise, I have 220 this is Vr Point nine three six. That is two hundred and thirty five. Right. So how did I get this? How did I get this? So this is a. This is a. And if the sending end voltage is at two twenty volts, if the sending end voltage is at two twenty volts, then on no load, on no load, the receiving end voltage will be. V S by A because I R is equal to zero on no load. So I can find out the regulation. 235 minus 220 by 220 that is equal to 6.88 percent. So this is another way you can find the regulation or here itself you can find out here you have 
in this i can i can find the regulation from this also 230.78 minus 220 by 220 into 100 clear slightly different answers you will get depending on how you define the regulation but most authors uh they do this what is the receiving and no load voltage minus full load voltage by full load voltage into 100 so in that case you take the voltage sending and voltage divided by a you get the uh, so you, you have to use the formula vs is equal to avr plus vir when ir is equal to zero you will get vr is equal to vs by a and you can calculate the regulation clear yeah. so uh, i hope uh, that um, you know these uh, numericals and short problems we solved uh, have made things uh, clear thank you